Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My constituents in Southwest Indiana need access to reliable, affordable, environmentally sustainable energy. Look, all of us want to breathe clean air. We want clean water to drink and we want clean land to utilize and enjoy in the future. That That's kind of universal, right? Um, you know, but when a out visiting energy stakeholders recently, someone explained the current ideologically driven efforts to replace all the fossil fuel generation with wind and solar in this way. And, and I'm paraphrasing, basically said, this is a battle between politics and science and physics. And I can tell you which one will win out. And I think what he meant by that is we need to start looking at the facts and get away from the ideology. And in that vein, I mean, I, uh, uh, Dr. Cohen, I just want to ask you a yes or no question quickly. Does the U.S. government own any gasoline stations in America? Did you say gasoline? Yeah, like you go to pump no, your gas. Do we, does the well, U.S. government own any I assume any DOD has some fuel. Did we, did we build them? So. The answer to that question is no. And so I just don't see why the U.S. taxpayer should be funding uh, EV charging stations across the country. Look, I support EVs, but why should we be doing that? Uh, because we're doing that because the market won't bear it. The free market at this point in our, in our country won't bear it. If it in the future does, I'm all in. Let the private well, the sector US do it. And so I didn't ask you a question. Engaged. I didn't ask you a question. Um, so, I mean, every point you make on energy issues uh, in this hearing depend on massive federal government subsidies exactly. and not the free market. So I just wanted to point that out. I mean, we have just an, a disagreement, I think, between our two sides here. Believers in the free market and let, you know, technology where, wherever it goes, all the above, or massively subsidize um, green, green energy at the expense of energy security and national security and cost. So, Mr. Um, DeBar, I'll ask you this question. Do you believe that current investors in the energy sector are primarily motivated by what? Politics, physics, science? I mean, if they're looking to invest, where, and, and what are the pressures being put on them um, by politics? Uh, so, Congressman, they're still primarily focused on profit. That's excellent for of America. Course. But there is pressure from investors around ESG uh, because of uh, you know, people who feel like uh, that they need to do a certain shift, and they do uh, certainly get that pressure. Of course they do. Um, and where, where do you think, I'll, I'll, same question, Mr. McNally, do you have any comments on that? Uh, I would agree with my colleague, it's, uh, yeah. it's profit return on capital. And right. uh, I would just point out to you. Yeah, I mean, but I'll just give you my view. But we're using ideological politics to ter try to divide, to, to direct investment in a free market capitalist system. And that is a huge mistake. Let the system work. Um, Mr. DeBar, again, you mentioned in your testimony that FERC needs to radically overhaul ISO rules to facilitate increased base load power. Um, what, what should we do? Um, the markets that right now uh, uh, try to support base load, the capacity markets don't work. Uh, and more power plants are being shut down than are being built. Uh, I think that FERC needs to come up with new rules uh, that specifically uh, require uh, either the ISOs or maybe even going back to the utilities, like in the old days, where they have an obligation to serve. Right now, there's no obligation to serve. And that's the challenge in the markets right now. The individual power plant owners don't have an obligation to serve. And the wires companies don't have an obligation to serve other than keep their wires up. But supply itself, where it used to be the individual utility had a quote obligation to serve, meaning to actually make the power, to have power plants, that has been pushed out to the ISOs and they are not uh, incentivizing power to actually be built. Thank you for that answer. I just want to point out some, but one of you mentioned we shouldn't be used using China as a benchmark. And let me just partially tell you why. I mean, they're, since 2021, they're building 33 gigawatts of coal-fired power generation, three times more than the rest of the world combined. They're building 14 new power plants since 2021 in their own country. And here, listen to this. But they will finish another 27 abroad. 
they're driving this worldwide. Of course, it is true they're trying to expand the renewables also, no doubt. Currently, there's about 1,118 coal-fired power plants in China, 225 in the United States. So I, w I just want to concur with that testimony that they are not our benchmark. And first of all, the other thing is, we're our benchmark. We should be the benchmark driving the global energy economy. I yield back.